Hey guys, today I have another review slash unboxing. I said I'd review the War Games Factory of uh, Viking Huskarls. I recently reviewed the uh, uh, Greeks in Heavy Armor, the Hoplites from War Games Factory. I'm trying to do reviews first on things that aren't, haven't been reviewed yet. So I was the first to review the Hoplites. At least from what I've searched, I couldn't find anyone else. And um, this as well. I've seen that the Saxons from War Games Factory have been reviewed. But not the Vikings. So these are the Viking Huskarls. And when I get the Viking Bondi, I'll be reviewing those as well. As you can see, War Games Factory. This is from their Hammer of the Gods range. That They have the, the Dark Age line that they have. They have uh, Vikings and Saxons. And for each group, they have armored and unarmored soldiers. Um, perfect for Saga. Um, you know, um, 28 mil. Um, so perfect for Saga. Um, they're historical, so you can use it for many other games. Uh, one of them being Hail Caesar. Um, Field of Glory. You know, uh, and for the most part, those suit you very well, and they probably were intended to be played with Saga. These are absolutely perfect. Vikings is one of the main uh, armies for Saga. Um, you get 32 per box. Um, the Viking House Crows, as you can see, they're the armored version, so they, they all have chainmail. And a variety of weapons. You get shields for all of them, round the buckler type shields, or targe, whatever you want to call it. Um, what's nice about these is that many kits for Vikings from other companies, they don't have the ridge on the edges of the shield. It's just a, a flat panel, which could is could be accurate. Here I have an example. Um, I want to show you guys. A lot of players kind of annoys them that um, uh, let's see if I can get this new lamp to work. Um, as you can see, it has the ridge on the edge. Um, other companies, I know Gripping Beast, it does not have that m metallic uh, etching on the edge, you know, with the rivets. Uh, it's just pretty much the boss, and then it goes uh, soft on the edges, um, which would be accurate. It would be maybe um, a leather or, uh, you know, animal hide that would have just stretched over it. But the, uh, the War Games Factory ones, extremely good quality shields. They have the hole in the middle, um, they have the ridges, so, so lots of glue points for the hand. All the hands have, uh, they're in a closed fist, unlike the hoplites where they have it in a cup. Um, glues very, very nicely. You can see the wood panels inside, more edging on the inside, lots of detail. A very nice boss with separation. That'll take real good when painted. Um, you get 32 in a box. Uh, that's more than enough for Saga. Uh, Saga uses anywhere. You can have armies that are 16 models and possibly less uh, to models that are, you know, to armies that are, you know, over 70 models. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the rules of Saga, but basically what you have are three different unit types, three main unit types, are levies, you know, your peasants, your farmers, which are typically units of 12. So as you can see in this box, you can have two units of levies and leftovers. Uh, you can have three units because that would be 36, but then these guys are armored, so usually levies are unarmored. But for that, you could get the Bondi box, which are the, the uh, vi unarmored Vikings. Um, but with this, what you would use these for primarily would be um, the second unit, which are the warriors, that are eight-man units, um, which can, which can, the most units can be combined to be made larger. Um, so it would be eight-man unit of warriors, which well, would typically have armor. Some are unarmored, but you could use these guys as warriors. And then the third unit, which are the hearth guard, which are your elites in Saga. So you could use these guys as warriors or hearth guard. And if you if you go the hearth guard route, there are units of four. Saga uses point values of 1 through 6 points. Some games are bigger, um, but obviously you need at least 1 point. The average being, you know, 2 points, uh, you know, if, if you're starting. You could even start with 1 point. Um, most games are 4 points, so you have 4 units. Each unit is worth 1 point. So with this one box, you could take, um, this could be, if you take all warriors, you could have 4 points worth of warriors, 32, 8 per unit, so you have 8, 16, 24, 32, so um, you would have four points, four units of eight warriors in this one box, which is enough for Saga. Um, you could also go, if you want to use Hearthguard, you can have six points. Um, what, that's uh, units of four men um, into 32. That's seven points, so you actually have an excess. <laughs> so with this one box, you can take six points plus... Of Hearthguard for Saga, so with this one box you can have a six-point army for Saga if you wanted to take all Hearthguard. You could also take a combination of Hearthguard and Warriors with this one box. 
Um, this one, this box also comes with uh, uh, command sprue. Let's you build a musician and a, a war leader. Pretty much any of these guys could be a war leader. Um, your your unit commander. Um, just ba you know, just the way you di differentiate him and the way you pose him. All right, so as you can see here, it's just a simple cardboard box. It's got some nice painted models in the back. Description of what you get. Um, pretty good packaging. Um, this does not come with bases, which is not a big deal. Um, luckily, I had many, many bases left over from Fantasy, from Games Workshop. So I was just able to use them. I use these 20 mil by 20 mil um, GW bases, which, uh, as you can see here, work quite quite well. So I had a whole bunch left over, so I had more than enough. Um, so you get two different sprues. As you can see, the typical War Games Factory and that they stack so there's no damage to anything very good um, you can stack them, you can stack them this way, any way you want, you get two stacks so let's see if I have any that I have not gone into yet, so here's one here's one sprue has all the, the different arms on it uh, many many pairs, so you will have many spares and you have loads of variety and uh, different posability that you have many many options for posing so not not no two models in this kit will look the same if, if you know if you want to make them all different. Um, four different poses, all of them wearing chainmail, uh, leather shoes, uh, nice pants. Some of them I just noticed even have like this guy right here. He has um, straps that go all the way up to his knee that cover his shin. So it's even more detail, real nice. Uh, they have belts and pouches. Some of them have dirks inside of and dirks daggers inside of uh, scabbards. So you have one guy here who has kind of like a running pose or something like that. The guy's kind of at an angle. So you have four different poses here. Um, those that four different poses. Uh, they go a long way just because of so many arms you have and so many different weapons options. Um, pretty good detail on the chainmail. Quite good. Uh, I heard one guy complain that um, the belts kind of stick out too much. It's not a big deal. I mean, for what it's it's really not a big deal at all. I think it's a a mute point quite ridiculously even mentioned but it is you know just one thing to bring up um, these are the cheapest per model that you could possibly get from any company uh, specifically for 28 mil plastics and uh, more specifically for Vikings these are the cheapest 28 mil plastic Vikings that there are there's no cheaper um, it comes to around since this box comes with 32 instead of 30 and it's the same price as the hoplites and the rest of their range it's actually um, less than 50 cents per model um, and that's at full MSRP. If you get it at discounted, as you know, ninety percent of us do online, um, so you can get this. Uh, it, it retails for twenty dollars a box, thirty-two guys. You can find it for sixteen dollars, even fifteen dollars. So if you if you do get it discounted, you're going to be paying you know, around thirty, forty something cents per model, which is ridiculously cheap. So I showed you guys that sprue. Let's see if I have any intact weapon sprues. Yes, here we do. Here I have a unit of them built up, which I'm going to show you. But here's another sprue. This has all the different heads on it, many different types. Uh, 3, 4, uh, 7, 9, 10, 12 different heads. Some with helmets, some without helmets. Very, very nice detail on them. Uh, pretty much they all have beards, as Vikings would have had. Uh, as you can see, there's different spears that you can have. They come separate. The hands are cupped, so you can add um, any type of weapon you want. Um, various shields. The shields are all the same, but they probably would have been. Um, you, they even give you bows, so you can have some guys armed with bows. I wouldn't use the bows on them because these are guys are the armored ones. So you, typically, it's not a rule, but for the most part in Saga, your bowmen are going to be your levies. There are some factions that take uh, warriors or hearthguard with bows, but uh, I wouldn't mix uh, the chainmail guys with bows. So I just made all these guys with uh, with melee weapons. Um, as you can see here, they have a combination arm. It's one piece for two arms. Um, the way it's molded, it's quite good. You don't really see the, the connection. It, it's very, very good. And that's to use the two-handed weapons that they give you. Either you could put axes on them. As you can see on the shoulders, they have the continuation of the of the chainmail. So it matches up with the shirt, uh, the shirt of chainmail. You get these uh, large axes, these two-handed axes, which could be used in Saga as Dane axes. It's not extremely accurate because it would have had a longer shaft and it would have been more straight. But you can definitely use them here. I have uh, an example of a two-handed axe. Very, very well. It fits inside perfectly, nice and snug. Very convincing. 
which can be used in Saga as Dane axes, or in other games like Kill Caesar, they also have the Danish axe, or two-handed axes have their own special rules. As you can see, four different spears. You could have. Um, I'm not sure if they give you enough spears to have all of them armed with spears, but they probably wouldn't have been all armed with the same weapon. As you can see, you know there were Vikings or raiders, so each would have had his own his own weapon that he preferred. So you have axes, uh, swords, spears. Um, they would have all had a different variety. They wouldn't have all been equipped with the same weapon. Um, two different types of swords. You have uh, two that are the same. Real cool, your typical uh, Viking looking sword. Long swords. And then a shorter sword with a different pommel and a different hilt. So you can have varieties there as well. Um, you can have... Um, oh, actually... Uh, is that the same? Yeah, two different types of swords, but they give you four per sprue. They gave you three that are in a scabbard, so you can make your guys with axes or spears, even bows if you wanted to. Um, they give you quivers as well if you want to make them bowmen. Very nice detail on the quiver with the uh, arrows. And the sheath swords, you can give them on your guys that have spears or clip off the tip like I did with my war, my war commander. I clipped off the, 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 the sheath sword, I clipped off the hilt, and I gave him a sword. So it looks like he drew his sword so it doesn't look off, you know, that he has uh, two swords, one sheath and one in his hand. So with a real simple clip, a little bit of file, um, it, it's pretty convincing to make it look like he unsheathed the sword. You also get several horns to make musicians. Here's an example. Just gave him a shield. I gave him a full sheathed sword, as you can see. I don't know what you guys can see. And uh, gave him a shield that's kind of raised, and he's holding the, the horn. So effectively, musician. So you can make several. So you can definitely make a command group out of this for Hail Caesar or for Saga. Um, so yeah, you get uh, several two-handed axes, one-handed axes. Um, since what I like is that since all the hands are cupped, you can make your guys dual wield if you wanted to. Make them like a berserker type, or just dual wielding an axe and a sword, two axes, two swords, a spear and a sword, any combination that you want. Very very nice uh, on the shields. The biggest plus for me is the shields. Uh, fantastic shields. Uh, very convincing. I don't like, I'm not convinced with other companies, uh, for example, Gripping Beast. I do like that they have a, a bigger hole so that the hand fits inside. So it has a better glue point, but it doesn't have the edge that these do. So I prefer these shields. Okay, so I showed that to you guys. Those are the two sprues you get. Um, there's no command sprue specifically. Basically, from what you get, um, you can make a command sprue out of it. Um... And I'll show you guys how I made my commander, what I did to effectively make a commander. And as you can see, I still have another seven dudes that I have not built. Probably some more in there. Those are the two sprues you get. You get, uh, I'll tell you how many sprues. You get 11 sprues. Oh, I have another one here. So you get 12 sprues. And so I have uh, 11 guys that I have yet to build. And I already have a big unit here. Here I have uh, 20. 10 wide, 2 deep. This isn't a finished unit. This is just 2 thirds of the, of the box. I still have another 11 guys that I have yet to build. As you can see some of the varieties of different builds. On GW bases. Um, here I have a almost finished guy that I'll show you closer up. That's painted. As you can see, they look real nice as a unit, but in Saga, you don't use movement bases. They're kind of all separated. It's more per model, like uh, you know, like would be 40k or fantasy, like a GW game, where each unit individually has a, a stat. Hail Caesar, it's unit-based stats. So, if I want to take these guys for Hail Caesar, I can use it for Hail Caesar. Also, Saga. Um, you can see many different poses, different helmets. Not two guys. Not uh, there aren't. There's no pair here that are identical. Every single guy is completely different um, from the helmets that you get, the shields, the different ways you can put the arms since they're each individual, the weapons that you have, they, um, not, no two guys are the same. Um, so you have loads of variety, uh, many countless ways of, of posability, real, real cool as a unit. So let me show you a painted example. He is not finished, but I still have to base him and finish some, some details. But pretty much this is what you get. The shield obviously isn't finished. I have to paint the boss and finish the layering and highlighting on the shield. 
Uh, this does have a one layer of wash after I highlight it. You can see the tunic, real nice detail. Some highlighting on the pants. Tunic, real cool color. I might do a video on how I painted these guys. Um, real cool detail. Uh, the hilt is a separate color as you guys can see as well as the, the helmet is really cool, really convincing. As you can see the edges I edged in, it's gilded in gold. The Vikings would have had edged uh, gilded armor or at least their helmets and their hilts and pommels would have been made of gold. At least some of them from stuff that they looted. Real nice chainmail. A bit of a uh, warping there, a bit of a uh, kind of soft but uh, with a good paint job and some wash. Um, it's kind of, you know, blind to the naked eye. As you can see inside, it's got the two metal panels on the shield and the planks, each individual look real nice. Uh, you know, they look great, quite frankly, and from the 30, 32 guys you have, they're all going to look different. Also, when you add the paint to them, they're going to look even more different, more individual. So this is my commander from what I made. I gave him a, he has a special head, he's got braids, big beard, he just looks like a commander. I gave him a distinct pose so he's standing and I put the sword kind of down he just looks like the leader of the group so I uh, made this guy the leader there's no command sprue but you can do what I did and be creative and make him be striking a, a specific pose and that head kind of looks like a leader head so I admitted using it in my other uh, guys I saved that because you do have spares at the end you will have spare pairs of arms and spare heads and uh, spare weapons as well you can use it for other kits and then com combine it with other 28 mil or more War Games Factory stuff. So I use that one head. You will have spares. So only this guy has that one head and I still have the spares. So that'll be my commander. He's not finished. Not even close. 32 per box. $20 MSRP. I got it for 16 And there are other places now. A new place I found that I can get it for $15. So it's even cheaper. Per model. Cheapest that there possibly is. Um, you can use it obviously for Saga. You buy that one box. And you have a Saga army. You have a four-point army, if not more. If you start taking Hearthguard and you emit levies, um, you can have a six-point army with this one box. You buy this one box, 15 bucks, and you have a Saga army, 28 mil, hard plastic, very good quality. Um, this is probably so far my favorite War Games Factory kit. I just I really, really like it. The one downside, which doesn't really affect me because I had these spares, is that they don't give you bases, but that's okay. Uh, it's probably one of their older sets because every other set that I have, they do give you bases. This would be an example that came with the Greek hoplites, and then the ones for, that came with my samurai are hollow on the bottom. Very, not very, very nice. And they're a little bit bigger as well, which is better when you have them in units, because then there's more space in between them and more space for basing. But I just use GW uh, bases run. So when they are all painted, which will be a while from now, but when they are and they're all built, I will show you. I'll do a project update. Also, if I do any battle reports with them, I'll make sure to upload that. Try to get a game of Saga in, four point game or maybe six points. And uh, with Vikings, I have I've yet to use Vikings for Saga. I've been using Byzantines. Um, so yeah, I'll be doing battle reports with them, and maybe if I decide to paint one, I'll film it so I can show you guys how I how I painted it. Um, to give you guys any any you know different ideas of how you could paint your guys. I also bought this thing to help me uh, paint the shields. My local hobby store, I bought some local uh, art supply. I bought some real thin uh, masking tape, which I will use to paint the shield. It makes life a lot easier, so you get straight lines. Some simple thin uh, masking tape. This costs around two bucks uh, for delicate services, you know, uh, clean removal, so it won't leave any sticky residue. Um, this was free handed, pretty straight for the most part, but this is going to make life a lot easier to paint the shields to get the different angles and straight lines it would be great um, that's something I really recommend is masking tape or some people even like to use this stuff so that way you don't have to buy the you don't have to rely on the the pain in the ass which we all know is a pain in the ass for decals some people got it down packed and they know how to do it very very well but uh, I'd rather always have my stuff uh, freehand especially with the masking tape makes it a lot, a lot easier this mounting putty which a lot of people use to you know, put on top of old paint pots or something. Um, mount your model so you can paint it better. But you can also use this as masking tape. It also removes very nicely. Um, I haven't used it on 28 mil humanoids. I've used it on on vehicles to paint camouflage, and this works great. All right, guys. So 
battle report with these guys when I get the Viking Bondi, their counterparts, which is pretty much the same kit, but they don't have chainmail, they're unarmored. I'm going to make those guys more with spears and, and, and bows so I can use them as levies and maybe warriors so I can have even more. So with $30, you could get a box of Huskarls and a box of Bondi. You could have armored and unarmored Vikings effectively having way more than six points and endless variety to make any uh, Viking Saga army. What's, the beauty about this is Saga, most armies can be used... Uh, one set of, of miniatures can be used for several different armies since pretty much they all looked extremely similar in the Dark Ages. They all had chainmail, iron, weapons, and beards. And they were all, you know, we're all Caucasian, so we all look the same. Um, unless you start taking Byzantines and Rus, you know, the Russians looked different. They had different armor, different weapons, and the Byzantines had a different Eastern influence style. So, But pretty much you buy these Vikings, you could use it for anything. Also, they're Saxons. They have the distinct kite shields, but they have a lot of variety as well. So if I do get the Saxons, which I do want to get, they have them in Thanes, which would be the counterparts of the Huskarls. They'd be armored, and the Saxon Ferd, which are the unarmored Saxons. So I'll be trying to get those. Uh, it's just a great value. A Wargames Factory, you can get it from their website, wargamesfactory.com. They have their, all their ranges there. This is from the Hammer of the Gods. Extremely good value. Um, definitely recommend it if you want to play your historicals, you know, your Vikings. There's no cheaper per model out there from any other company. Uh, next, I will probably do a review on Hail Caesar itself, do some discussions, do a few videos on that. One on the book itself, just a shorter video, just to show you guys the book. And then another video about the game itself, what do I plan to do in the game, uh, ideas for future videos. Um, you know, for Hell Caesar, I'm going to be doing battle reports for Hell Caesar and for Saga. And you know, if I ever get my hands on, start doing other projects like Pike and Shot, Black Powder, Bolt Action, which I really want to get into. Um, be doing battle reports, you know, videos, unboxing of miniatures, um, painting videos, tutorials. I'm also going to be doing videos on making terrain and making bases. Um, I got this uh, these planks of wood. Be using it to make terrain and also movement trays. Because the GW ones aren't so great, and you get you don't get enough per box, and they're twenty dollars um, for a, a, a box of movement trays, and it's just basically two planks. You can cut them up, but it's not enough, especially not for Hail Caesar, where you use literally hundreds of models. Um, each division can have over a hundred models, and you use several divisions, so you could have nearly a thousand models in some armies for Hail Caesar. It's just uh, the biggest scale there is. If you guys know about 40k Apocalypse, uh, this is kind of craps on apocalypse and just in scale um, they use tables that are you know minimum 10 feet by 10 10 by 15 20 feet by 20 you know and it's endless this game scales better than any other game you can potentially recreate battles and you know have thousands on each side and have several players on each side so I'll be doing this how I do movement trays using this base wood and I got these smaller pieces to do ridges Obviously, it's not going to be that tall, but I'm going to cut it down to size, show you guys how I did it and how it worked afterwards. I'm going to try to magnetize them as well, but for now, they won't be magnetized. I'm going to paint them, flock them, um, make them scenic, cut this down, make several moving trees, and show you guys how I did it. Um, these are about a buck a piece. This was about three bucks for the bigger one. So I'm just showing you guys how I how I did my movement trees and try to make some buildings too for uh, you know for Saga and Hell Caesar in 28 mil. I'm going to be reviewing the Conquest of Gaul starter set from Hell Caesar Warlord Games that I got, showing you what came in the box. As you can see, these Romans here. I'm going to be reviewing them separately. Also, going to be showing you how they came in the box. Also, these Celts that I have, the Gauls. I'm going to be reviewing them and uh, separately, as well as showing you how they came in the box and the Hell Caesar book and many other Hell Caesar things. I have a Roman starter army that's on the way. I'm going to be reviewing that and telling you guys how I'm going to use it. Show you painted models. And this is kind of huge, so it doesn't really fit in the shot, but that's a uh, foam board, which I'm going to be using to make terrain. Hills, forests, um, you know, uh, bridges as well. You can do many things with that foam board, many, many different things. You can make hills, you can make mountains with it if you start stacking them. Cliffs, uh, ravines, a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm going to be showing you guys how I do my terrain and finished products as well showing you the materials I used it you know the cost and all that stuff so a whole bunch of videos uh, unboxings painting videos and many many battle reports I'm going to be doing every time I play a game now I'm going to take my camera 
and I'm going to record it. So I'm going to be recording games of Hail Caesar. My first game of Hail Caesar, I will show you guys the battle report in detail and in, and in parts so you can see everything. Um, battle reports for Saga and more battle reports for Flames of War. So we'll be doing, you know, Flames of War, Early War, Mid War, Late War with different armies, different countries, different types of lists, hopefully with different opponents. Uh, painting videos on Flames of War models as well. Um, more videos on the Japanese from Flames of War as well. Um, how I paint them, uh, the army lists. It's another vi type of video I like to do is army list videos, which I, I really enjoy. There are very, very few of them on YouTube. And all these types of videos I really like to watch while I'm um, taking part in the hobby, whether I'm painting, building, um, making an army list myself, just anything while I'm doing stuff from related to the hobby. I like to watch YouTube and you know see anybody's video, just even if it's a historical game that I don't even play. It's just cool to have that in the background to immerse yourself in the hobby. So while I was building my Romans, I'd watch a video about Pike and Shroud, or watch a video about Bolt Action, a battle report, or watch an interview with Rick Priestley, or you know just just cool.